Good morning. Welcome to Life 5 with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're joining us today. Uh, just a quick reminder, tomorrow we I won't be live nor on Friday. Um, but we have I have a couple uh, things that I'll be sending you via email about what is a, a, a way you could devotionally prepare for Thanksgiving service, even though this is a uh, a secular holiday, there's every reason that this can be adopted and utilized by Christians in a faithful way. Um, and so I'll be sending you some devotional thoughts on how you can go about that for your Thanksgiving meal. Um, and I don't have any go juice today. I've had enough. I'm, I'm good. Uh, so it's it is all gone for the day, but good morning, June. Good morning, Larry. Let's make our beginning this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Pull out the YouVersion Bible app and you see that we remain in the Psalms today. Psalm 23, the famous Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ah, just such a wonderful, wonderful text. And we have this humanizing of the abstract goodness and mercy the things that are pursuing uh, me, you, pursuing the author, but us as well. But following these metaphors of the Lord as my shepherd, it gives us yet another dramatic way of thinking about Yahweh, thinking about God, that he is good, he is merciful in the flesh. This is a reality David did not know. And that's the neat thing about the consistency of Scripture, is that what David said about his Lord, his shepherd, is also true for us today, but in a more abundant reality because we have this dramatic uh, incarnation of God's goodness and mercy in Jesus, much like his love is, is in human form with Jesus' incarnation. So humanizing these abstract ideas of God's goodness and his mercy, they become less disconnected. It's easier to know them. Uh, knowing what goodness is apart from God is challenging. Knowing what mercy is apart from God is challenging. But to see them connected to him in this unique way as our shepherd allows us to know what these things can look like in the world. They become a part of our world. Something that we experience up close rather than a concept that we reflect on or simply think about. And so we have this final prayer or statement of joy at the very conclusion uh, that we may remain in the house of the Lord all of the days of our lives. And that is not to just be in church, but to have the benefits of church. This is what David is getting at, that we may hear God's word, that through it may receive the many kinds of blessings and fruits that, that we were shown above in the other verses of Psalm 23, and endure therein to the end. And then we pray that Christ, our shepherd, will grant these things to us. Oh. It's it's a remarkable prayer to make your own, Psalm 23. And in, in light of that, something I would like to share with you is there, there are so many resources for devotion time and study of God's Word. I get often asked where to start. Uh, scripture is kind of daunting and overwhelming. Not everyone has a well-organized Bible study that they can attend, um, such as our ladies' Bible study, uh, and so I, I have a number of places I go often feeling out the, the faith background of the individual. But one that I really encourage you to consider 
is reading the Psalms with Luther from CPH. It has a brief statement about the Psalm from one of Luther's works, and then the Psalm, and then a prayer. Um, and then in the very end, in the very back, you have uh, a reading schedule. This is the one for Advent, Lent, and then just general weeks and how you could read through the Psalms. And then there's another one for other portions of the year. There actually is a, a way of doing morning and evening prayer time through the Psalms, praying through the Psalms. Um, it's wonderful. So if you're looking, if you are going to be slated to pray for the Thanksgiving meal tomorrow, consider the Psalms. Consider pulling out a Psalm. Consider looking at one of the Psalms beforehand and praying it. Pray, pray the Psalm. Pray a portion of it. Or if you have this book, pray the prayer that comes at the end of reading the Psalm. So in practice for that, what I'm going to do is I would like to read us. I'm going to, I'm, we're going to pray the prayer written for Psalm 23. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, who alone is that one good shepherd, thanks be unto you for all your spiritual and bodily benefits. Let the word of your salvation dwell among us richly and suffer not that trusty staff, the word of your promise, to be taken from us. And when the shadow of death spreads over us, Conduct us safely to the fold of the perfect saints, the tabernacle not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Amen. Uh, worth knowing about, worth having as an arrow in your quiver for devotional study. Um, and you can always amend a prayer. You don't have to do the whole thing just because it's been given you. Uh, blessings to you today as you're uh, possibly getting ready for your Thanksgiving um gathering. If you know of someone who doesn't have a place to be, um, please give me a call, contact the church office. I know of homes that have extra seats uh, for Thanksgiving. Um, and this also stands for Christmas as well, and any day of the week, really. Have a wonderful day in Christ. I look forward to seeing you soon.